Hi everybody, I'm back again, <laughs> kind of with the same tutorial, only trying a different paper because I was told that tracing paper does not work. So I wanted to try it myself, not that I didn't believe the person, just thought, you know, I'm going to give it a whirl so that I can definitely tell you don't use tracing paper. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to, to try is uh, freezer paper because I heard that works real well too. So I thought we'd play together, okay? And I hope the lighting's gonna be good for you. Another, It's really um, gloomy out there, and I'm not quite sure whether we're gonna get rain. I'm praying for rain um, because of all the forest fires, but we'll see. Okay, this is just a piece of leftover napkin, so I figured, well, if I'm gonna wreck something, I don't wanna wreck a whole napkin. So I'm just gonna um, quickly iron this. And I think actually I have to turn my iron up. <clears throat> I don't think it's quite hot enough yet. So let's turn it to linen. Where am I going? Nope, this way. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Now it's on the hottest. I'm just going to turn that over and iron this side. This is such a pretty napkin. I used this on the last book. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention is that there are a couple of different things, you know, with napkins. Depending on what you put in the background, like if I put this on brown paper, it'll make it look very vintage. Um, but I wanted, I like the pop of the, the lavender color, so I'm sticking with that. So I've already got my tracing paper. And I don't think, okay, there's um, let's try it on the dull side. This, you can feel it. There's a dull side and a shiny side. Let's try it on the dull side, because in my mind, it should work on that side. But I could be wrong. So, got my saran. And I know I didn't mention, but I just get mine from the dollar store. It works just fine. I hate spending money on stuff that you end up throwing out anyway. It's I'm very cheap. <laughs> okay, so then I've got my napkin, and then I've got another piece of free um sorry um, parchment paper. Now that's the other thing I forgot to mention was that I reuse the same pieces over and over again. You don't need to keep um, cutting a new piece each and every time. They will curl though, <laughs> so, you know. Okay, let's try it, see what happens. So I'm going to start by just resting it on top. And this is good too, because uh, yesterday the I had pretty much cut everything the proper size, so there was no real overhang, and so you didn't really get to see how easy it comes off and how... Yeah, I didn't wreck my iron at all. I don't know. I just feel like, okay, you know, some things... Um, that's my iron telling me it's hot enough. Um, sometimes I think we can kind of go overboard when it comes to tools. Like, I love buying tools, crafting tools. But... You know, when you look at it and you think to yourself, really, I could have used something from my kitchen for that, you know? That's kind of where I'm at as far as spending on these, you know, tools that, yeah, they work, but I could have used something else that I already had. Why spend the money? And that's kind of how I am with irons. I don't feel like I should have to go out and buy a separate iron just for crafting when you know, this works great, and, I mean, unless, of course, you're ironing, I don't know, if I iron, uh, like, say, tea stain paper, you do the exact same thing, you just put some parchment over top of it, then you're not getting any of the tea on your iron, so, really, it's unnecessary, but not saying that it's a bad thing, I mean, it, it that's what you want to do, but for myself, I mean, my craft room is stuffed full, and it's not a very big room, so 
uh, yeah, I don't want extra stuff in there. Okay, so you see how that comes off super easy? And there is, all around the edge, um, wrap, uh, saran wrap. And it didn't stick, so it comes right off. So now what you want to do is see if that's going to come off. See? It does. If you peel that off, it does come off. So this is the tracing paper. Let's try doing it again and see what happens. Maybe it just wasn't stuck down very well. Because the outside edge really wasn't melted all that much. But we'll try it. Edges are the most difficult when you're doing this technique. So I recommend, you know, that you really spend time around the edge there. Not on the edge, around the edge. <laughs> Sorry, I've only had one cup of coffee. <laughs> it's still really early. But I was watching this, um, okay, why are you giving me grief? Stop it. Um, I was watching this woman this morning on YouTube try the, well I didn't watch the whole video, I just saw the very beginning part of it and uh, I thought, hey, I've got freezer paper, let's try that. So I thought instead of trying it and then having to film it again, I might as well just try it with you guys. You know, so it's kind of live, but not really, you know. Okay. Let's take this off and set the this um, parchment aside. It looks really pretty. I'm just going to let it cool down a little. But it looks adhered on the edge to me. I, I don't know if that's showing. Yeah, it is showing. Um, now, probably if I pulled that aside, it probably would come apart. But I want to cut it. Let's cut it and see if it would work. I just love the feel and the sound of tracing paper. Who doesn't, right? So if it works, then there you go. You've got another piece of paper you can use. Okay. Well, I can't get it to come off. That seems to have worked to me. There's no bubbling. And I'm rubbing to try and move it, but it's not moving. I'd say that works. Personally, I think that worked. But I bet you anything, it wouldn't work on the shiny side. So keep that in mind, okay? To me, I would absolutely use this, you know, to make a coin, coin pocket or whatever you want to do with that. But. Oh, I love the sound of that. Okay, it is not coming off. So there you go. Okay, tracing paper, yes, but not the shiny side. Okay, let's try. Now this is freezer paper, and I don't have white. I saw somebody do it, and they had white. I don't. But I picked um, a napkin. What did I do with it? Hmm. 
Is that it? Oh, <laughs> this is it. It was upside down. I picked a white napkin so that I could, uh, you know, get sort of a vintage feel to it. Um, and I know that this technique does work, but again, um, wanted to experiment. Oh, here, I'll show you that technique. Okay, I just need some tape. And I told you about the scotch tape. Yeah, then somebody said, just do it on the other side. <laughs> I thought, well, okay, oh, I'm not as brilliant as I might think I am. <laughs> Just take a little piece and put it on a corner, push it down pretty hard, and then you kind of pull. Okay, I probably did that upside down. Yeah, there you go. It just, for me, it gives an anchor, you know, and that it'll pull one layer if you can't lift the second layer do it again but this did come apart so yep there you go just like that simple now you see you take that off and you're gonna rip the back not the front so yeah thanks for that <laughs> I really appreciate it I do because <laughs> sometimes my brain doesn't work great okay now, I want to cut this somewhat uh, the same size as the napkin. Just so it's not sticking out too far from my parchment paper. Um, not parchment. Yes, parchment. Wow, I need another cup of coffee, you guys. Okay, set that aside and bring back my parchment paper, the freezer paper. Now, with the freezer paper, you want the shiny side because that is going to be what adheres it. And before I do that, I'm going to iron my napkin. It's a really hot iron, so do it quickly. Yeah, see it sticks to your iron when it's this hot. Yeah, it wrinkled a little in there, but uh, wrinkled a little in there. Okay. Alrighty, bring back the parchment paper. Then you've got your freezer paper with the shiny side. Then you've got your napkin. And another piece of parchment and you do exactly the same thing let's see how it actually works I've never done it I'm pretty sure this was uh, something crafty Irina had done uh, th that's not who I watched but um, it did remind me and I just never got around to trying it so I thought I would go ahead and try it for you guys. I'm pushing pretty firmly too, you know. Go a little slower to get more heat. It's kind of funny when I'm doing this, it looks to me, I think, oh, I've hit every corner, and then I watch the video and I think, oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. It's very slippery. see what's going on here so be careful because that's going to be really hot oh man that's already done that's on there wowzers I love that and it gives a tiny bit of texture oh that's awesome 
Yep, that completely worked. Wow, I have the biggest humongous roll. I'll show you guys. I left it out. I think I did anyway. What did I do with it though? Oh, maybe I didn't leave it out. But it's a honking big roll. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, just local grocery store. Uh, Costco probably carries it too. Uh, if you plan on doing a lot of this stuff, then that's worth it. Um, I don't use it for actual freezer wrapping, you know, because a lot of us have those uh, bag things where you suck the air out of. Um, so mine is just a no-name brand from my local grocery store. And it, you know, it, it's big. Like, it's probably 18 inches wide, probably. So you get a nice big sheet. Um, and it's not that expensive when you think about it. So this is nice and, and it's firm too, like not hard. Let's compare what I do with that. Yeah, this is definitely a lighter feel. This would be great for embellishments, like not heavy, but it's not going to tear. Let's try that. Yeah, it tears really easy. I wonder what it would be like if I punched it out. Let's grab a punch. Um, actually, I need an edge punch. Let's do an edge punch. Let's try this one. And I'm just going to cut the edge even. That would be one way to, you know, punch a pattern into your napkin, which of course normally you could never do. Let's see if it does work, but it might not work. If you did it on cardstock for sure, it should work. Okay, that gives me somewhat straight edge. I just picked a random, a random punch. Wow, that punched super easy. There it is. Oh, there you are. Isn't that cool? So, like in the freezer paper. Okay, so that is my review of tracing paper and freezer paper. So, to recap, you've got parchment paper so that nothing sticks. Now, a lot of people say, well, I, you know, coffee stain, tea stain, parchment. You can, I've done it, but you're going to find that the little drops that are on it will flake off because parchment is meant so that things do not stick to it. It's for baking, right? It's so that your cookies slide off. and So it has a special coating of some kind. I'm not that technical. So things don't stick to it. I wouldn't recommend that you... Um, coffee and tea stain it. But if that's the look you like, then go for it, right? It's all about what you like, not what I like. Um, okay, so you've got your parchment paper, you have tracing paper. When you're adhering a napkin to tracing paper, make sure it's on the dull side of the paper. Uh, then you have your freezer paper, then you want it on the shiny side, of, and the waxy feel is, is what you want. Um, and so that will allow you to do all kinds of cool things with like your millions of napkins if you're anything like me. <laughs> you know those giant boxes from Michaels with the you know that are all pretty and stuff and you can get them in all different sizes? I have a giant one and it's f literally full of napkins. So this for me is awesome uh, because I can do up a whole pile at one time and just store them, you know, until I need something. Uh, so that's my recap. Like I say, I like, I love this. It's way faster, um, but it's limiting as well in the sense that I only have brown. If I have a dark napkin and I want a lighter background, then I'd have to go with paper and my saran wrap, okay? Uh, that's it. That, that's my tutorial. <laughs> so have a great day, you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.